From Value Invest Asia, this is the Asian Mavericks. We explore the hidden stories of successful founders, business leaders, and investors in Asia. Here's your host, Stanley Lim. This month, we'll be talking to Dr. Tan Chong Khoi from Firm Asset Management. Firm Asset is an asset management company based out of Singapore and Malaysia. It also manages some of the best performing funds in the past 20 years in the region. In fact, in 2015, their ASEAN fund is awarded by Thomson Reuters as the best in its class in the past 20 years. Dr. Tan is also the first Malaysian fund manager to be appointed by the Norway Sovereign Wealth Fund as one of its external managers. As his peak, Firm Asset manages more than 5 billion ringgit in total. I have spoken to Dr. Tan in many occasions and he is actually featured in our book Value Investing in Asia. In my opinion, what can I say about Dr. Tan is that he is really the George Soros of Malaysia. He has shown again and again an uncanny ability to read the market which has helped him tremendously throughout his career and weathered through many many crises and came out stronger. This is Dr. Tan and this is his story. Enjoy. Oh, my name is Tan Chong Kui. Our company name is Firm Asset Management. Okay. We have two companies. Mm-hmm. Uh, we started in 1994 in Malaysia, uh, which is called Firm Asset Management Syndrome Bahad. Yep. We started Firm Asset Management Asia Private Limited in Singapore in 1995. Mm. That's one year later. Ah, okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I think Firm Asset uh, Management is uh, quite a well-known name, especially in Malaysia, I would say. Um, but the uh, people uh, might really be interested in you as a founder to understand you know, uh, how you are able to grow this business um, and become one of the best fund managers uh, in, in the region. Um, basically, if, if we go back in time, uh, can, can you maybe give us an idea uh, how were you like as a kid when you are growing up? Uh, were you a very optimistic and very cheerful kid or uh, how, how were you like? I was born in the humble family. My parents has nine kids. Wow. I rank eight out of nine. I always think I have the worst position <laughs> in the sense that my younger brother is very handsome, charming, you know, all my brother like him a lot <laughs> and I can't touch him, you know. <laughs> I hardly can go against my elders who are bigger than me. Mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, my parents is good. They treat me just the same as any of the kids. Mm-hmm. So I grown up quite happily. And I was always uh, told that I should be nice to people, mm. and that's how you. That's how, in the long run, you can get business. Right. Oh, that's interesting. And 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 um, having this entrepreneurial spirit in you, were you always entrepreneur since young, or how 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 did that uh, came about? Do you see yourself as an entrepreneur since young? No. When I was young, I was just you know we were hardly have having. Uh, a lot of basic need met, you know. Mm-hmm. So I was not as entrepreneurial in that sense, you know. I just, uh, when I was young, I remember I just thought, you know, if I can get an accounting job, you know, I would be quite happy, you know. Uh-huh. I can survive, you know. But when I grow up, i beginning to feel that, i uh, beginning to see people, see how other entrepreneurs uh, work very hard and become very successful and I always very interested to find out all these entrepreneurs who are make it, you know, from nowhere, you know. I wish I saw I would be one of them. Uh-huh. That that's really the motivation for okay. me to 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 learn a bit more, to try to hope that I will be one of them. You know? Right. Okay. And, and when <laughs> did when did that uh, bug really started uh, like uh, maybe what, maybe I age? should thanks my wife, you know. Uh-huh. I when I met my wife, you know, I uh, I met my wife when I was only 16 years old mm. and I begin to feel that their family are so much well off, you know, they are all graduates, you know. Mm. So I beginning to feel that, you know, I I, I better work harder. Mm. I should try myself to get a degree, try to work hard, you know, and be one of the uh, better husband, uh, <laughs> better, better, better entrepreneur. Right, you know? okay, okay. And that that that's a that that that's how it started. Ah, okay. Yeah. And, and when you I was not so ambitious and was I was very young. <laughs> I see. And, and when you go into the university, uh, how do you choose your your uh, 
uh, faculty and how, how do you end up with finance? I noticed that I like to analyze data and information so uh, when I go into the university I did quite well in my maths you know, mm -hmm. and I when I was in the third year of the university I beginning to feel that I think I should go into finance okay and then when I found out that investment analysis is what I like better <coughs> and I did very well in all my finance and investment courses so that's how I feel that I should tip into my uh, my strength right. in fact even today you know when I recruit anybody mm -hmm. our one of the key formula is that we try to tip into the strength of all our staff because if you do that you you generally do better you know you you you, you should go into things that you have a strength. You know? Ah, okay. Well, wow, you're very analytical since since very young. <laughs> yeah, since very young. But, but that's because you, 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 you are in a very humble position, you know. You and you want to go up. You have to be very careful. Right. And you have to make sure that you make no mistake, you ah. know. So and you can't afford to make mistakes. So right. so in that sense, I was very careful. Mm. And, and uh, after you graduate. Um, uh, where, where did you go? Where's your first job that you landed with? All the times I wanted to be in the portfolio management, you know, mm. I, I find that that is what I like to do and that's my strength, you know. But somehow I just was not lucky, you know. So I, I managed to get into a commercial bank mm -hmm. and I realized that I was there for one year and I was not so happy because mm. it's quite routine, you know. Right. Okay. Uh, although it, it gives you a good salary, uh, but that's not what I like to do. So one day, well, I was looking at the newspaper, you know, mm. and I noticed that this company say he's an investment company, you know, mm. or investment banking. You know, it was involved in investment banking. They advertise for an analyst job. Okay. And I noticed that they have been putting the ad three times in a row. Obviously, I thought it's either they can't. It's very, uh, uh, very uh, natural to assume that the the boss is either very difficult and he still couldn't find anybody. <laughs> so I uh, went and applied for the job, mm -hmm. and I was very lucky. You know, I I actually got the job. Ah, okay. The day after I came back, the secretary called me up. He said, "If you." Uh, if you want the job, you know, you get that job. Wow. Okay. So I was very happy. I realized that this company is very interesting. This company, C Corp, owned the first unit trust company in Malaysia ah. and also owned the first unit trust company in Singapore. Right. And in the old day, you know, you don't have the computer to store your data. Mm -hmm. And this company is the only few company I, I know. They, 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 they asked the staff to cut the newspaper oh. every day and file it up in the storeroom. Wow. I still remember after I joined them, I went to the storeroom and dig up all those data, which is very hard for you to get, except yep. the stock exchange. Okay. So stock exchange, as well as this company, mm. has a lot of data for me to analyze. Oh. So I was there for four years and seven months. Right, okay. I was very happy, you know, I, and I, 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 I built myself a little bit name, you know, mm -hmm. and I wrote an article in the Stock Exchange Monday uh -huh. uh, magazine. Okay. Almost every year I wrote one, you know. Wow, okay. And then, then I was still not too happy because before I joined this company, actually my ambitious is to join a merchant bank. Mm. But since I cannot get into the merchant bank, this is almost the second best. Mm. So, but C Corp, after I think over, I think it's the best <laughs> job that I get because uh -huh. even if I go to the merchant bank, they don't have that kind of data for me to analyze. Yep. Okay. And C Corp provide that. Right. So, four years, seven months later, somebody noticed me. Uh -huh. okay. So, one day I also look at another newspaper. I read newspaper almost every day. Mm. So the newspaper said there are three merchant banks looking to start an investment department in 1981 ah. when the market was at the highest point. 
So I was talking to my broker. Certainly, yeah, there are three, you know, mm. for me to apply. And I, <laughs> I, one time I want to apply, I couldn't get them. Okay. Then the guy said, After October 19, the market, we may go into recession for three years, you know, mm. or we, the economy uh, may slow down for a long time. Mm. But I said, look, the share has dropped so much, you know, I'm buying for long term. Mm. So instead, we actually go in and buy the shares. Uh -huh. So that was my first success, oh, okay. practicing uh, strictly to value investing because one, one of the very important points I want to mention is that the most difficult part is to send when the market is too high, mm. you know, mm. and you should reduce exposure even though you underperform the index. Mm. Uh, this is the most difficult part. Yep. When the market is going up, if you are practicing uh, value investing, mm. Mm. you will reduce your exposure. But mm. when you reduce your exposure and the market continue to go up, mm. you will underperform. Yep. Now, for a fund manager to temporarily underperform, many of them are not willing to do so. Mm. This year, you notice that when market was very high, a lot of people also don't sell shares. Yeah. And we actually was a bit lucky. We reduce our cash position. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, we reduce our equity position, sorry. Mm. Talking about so we that raise marketing, cash. Yeah. Uh, marketing timing. How, how were you able to, you know, know kind of spots uh, when is the market uh, uh, getting really hot and how long are you able to uh, hold on to it uh, if it continues to go up? It's not easy to do, but mm. but at some point you can feel it. 
Mm. I give you another more recent example. Mm. In the first half of 2014, the oil prices go up to above 100. Mm. And you notice that all the oil and gas shares in Malaysia, Singapore, many of them, their P-E ratio will go from 7 to like 30, you know. <laughs> and at 30, at 30, their earning is already jumped a lot. Mm. And you most probably will feel that it is difficult for them to continue that kind of growth. Mm. In fact, uh, one, of the, the, one of the success is that uh, we reduce our oil and gas stock almost to the minimum. Right. So in the second half, when the oil price start dropping, we suddenly realize that our ranking become top, you know, <laughs> because we don't have the oil and gas stock, you know. Yes. And uh, those who not only have oil and gas stock, mm. they overweight the oil and gas stock. <laughs> I think that's a big headache, you know. <laughs> so then we also felt that uh, in 2015, we continue to have very, very low uh, 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 oil and gas stock. Mm. Despite that, the share has dropped because we thought the share may just drop even more. Mm, so some of them who average, you see when it come down, you average, it can go down another 50%. Uh. Mm. So that's where, you know, uh, it, you know, investing is an art. No, you can say we are a bit lucky. Uh, you can also say that, you know, when they are at the high point, mm. you may really want to look for another cheaper stock. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah, uh, your, your investment strategy has definitely worked uh, for m many, many decades now. Uh, maybe talking a little bit back on not just your investment record, but uh, also starting the business uh, in the merchant <coughs> bank, right? You're almost uh, one of the pioneers in building up uh, the investment uh, industry in, in Malaysia through, uh, when you say the merchant bank, uh, Arab Malaysia M Bank right now. Mm. Um, how did you take on the challenge? Um, when, when you first started, how does the industry look like and... Uh, you know, how, how were you able to build up the, the whole industry as, as a whole? Okay, I, I think I'm also a bit lucky, you know. And mm. in life, you, you, you need to have a formula. Mm. As far as you are fund manager, formula to make money. Mm. On the other hand, you must also know how to do marketing. I was actually very, very lucky because I think soon after I joined uh, Arab Malaysian, at that time it was called Arab Malaysian Merchant Bank. Mm. They've changed the name now to M Banks, yeah? M Investment Bank. So, Dato Malik Marikan, who is a pioneer mm. in merchant banking mm. and who has a very good integrity and has a degree from Oxford and Cambridge, you know, and he, he is a person who home the market feel uh, is the man mm -hmm. who can be trusted mm. and and give your money to him. Right. So he came in to join and he got almost any almost all the institution in town wow. to come in. Like for example, uh, he brought in EBF and then mm. he brought in he convinced Social Security mm. to put the first dollar in in equity mm. and then we also managed to get Felda, we also managed to do it uh, Tabong Haji, Armed Forces, wow. mm -hmm. uh, uh, who else? Uh, even Malaysian Airlines System, <laughs> Pension Funds, you know. Uh -huh. We almost get all the important institutions in town. And w when we got the money from them, it mm. was like <coughs> after Pan L, you know. Uh. <laughs> and the market was at the lowest point. Mm. And then when it come to 1987, I sold the share. Mm. And then I go back and I continue to grow. So we were really having a very good time, you know, mm. in growing. Uh, wow. So you can also contribute the success to that is value investing. Mm. Not only value investing, how do you handle the volatility of Asian market? Mm. In order to handle that well is that there's no perfect formula. But one of the way to handle it well is to to have our philosophy in a sense that you should not fully invest at all time. Right. Because if you fully invest at all time, it means that 
when the market is at the highest point, mm. you're still fully invest. That is very, very dangerous. Right, right. Because when the market fall, first, it takes some time to fall. Secondly, mm. it takes another few years to come up. Mm -hmm. So that is the biggest damage. Uh. So the very important point is that in this volatility environment, uh, volatile environment, mm. you know, you need to sell when the market is at the high point. Mm. Otherwise, uh, I would like to compare if you do that and compare with you fully invest. Mm. Even in the long run, I think uh, not fully invest at all time will do better than fully invest at all time. Right. Okay. You understand? Yep. Not fully invest at all time will do better than fully, fully invest at all time. <laughs> yeah. So, you in between, you need to fine tune again, mm. sector wise, industry and all this, you know. Uh, so knowledge also become very important. Right. Okay. And, and so always understand. And the then after that, you 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 have to you know continue to do your in-house research. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay. Wow. Uh, sp speaking of that, uh, af after uh, you have been quite very successful in building up the the fund in M Bank, uh, you you left Malaysia I think in nineteen eighty eight to Correct. come to Singapore. Uh, why did you choose to to come here? I, I noticed that in Malaysia, while we have a, a lot of uh, money to manage in which we are very profitable, mm. I felt that uh, at that time, Malaysia at that time is still very introvert. Mm. You're basically just invest in Malaysia. Mm. So after being uh, named the, you know, top fund manager for the pension fund, the largest uh, uh, headhunting company. Mm. Uh, at that time, is the managing director of Con Ferry mm. uh, is called Yang Kwan Seng. Mm -hmm. So he said eh, he has a client who wanted to get you to become their, to, to, to lead their investment department. I found out that it was actually a, 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 a German bank. So, mm -hmm. so I was thinking over that, you know, uh, there are two things. Uh, first is that um, they are more international. Mm -hmm. So you, you get to expose yourself. If you want to be a good fund manager, you got to go out to the world. You know? mm -hmm. So uh, this guy is very keen to have me. I was really quite honored. You know? So mm -hmm. he said, you name me any price, wow. we'll get you to come in. Wow. Say the, all your transport, all your immigration, I will sort it out all for <laughs> you, you know. Uh -huh. uh, and so I was quite lucky, I came in, I get a chance to go regional mm. because at that time we basically only manage Malaysia and Singapore. I see. So when you come to Singapore, you can then go to ASEAN, you can then go to Hong Kong and China easily. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. Right. So I was quite happy. Uh, so I, I joined these German banks. Uh, mm -hmm. They promised to start a fund, you know, 100 million to uh -huh. invest in the region. Okay. Uh, what is very interesting is, what is very uh, different is that two years later, they still haven't started one. Oh. So I ended up with doing quite a bit of private banking okay. and I make it profitable mm -hmm. because of my experience, you know, I still can get quite a number of clients. Mm -hmm. But that's not what I want to do. I Although he allowed me to manage clients' money freely, but that's not institutional money. Right, I yeah. understand. Okay. But still quite sizable. Mm. Uh, we make it profitable. So certainly, Another Singapore, I mean, I mean, uh, London-based uh, asset management company come along, mm. so they offer me as the first director of uh, investment management department. Okay. So I I thought that would be easier. Mm -hmm. So they have a Malaysia fund, small cap, ah. seventy million US. Okay. They also has a first Sustec fund, thirty million US, and then they also have a Warren fund. So I thought that is my strength, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm a fund manager, I'm an equity fund manager. So they suddenly come up with these three funds for me to manage. I was quite keen. Wow. So I then, two years later, mm. I joined this asset management company. 
So I was a bit lucky, you no? Know? I won a Michael Pell Award for Malaysia Fund, wow. 1992. Mm -hmm. uh, although 1993, I, I, I left in November. Mm. 1993, I helped to manage this Sustec Fund mm -hmm. and also win Michael Pell Award. Then that bring to Bank Nagara attention. Uh, <laughs> Bank Nagara that? wanted to start the boutique ah. uh, 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 fund management industry. Mm. So they contacted me to ask if I'm interested to come back ah. and then join force with my former boss, Dr. Malik Marikan, mm. who is due to retire. Mm. Know. So I was a bit surprised uh, because at that time it's not easy for an individual yeah. to get a license. Exactly, yeah. And our license is very unique at that time. Mm. Right from the start, we are allowed to invest overseas. Uh -huh. That is very, very difficult to, to mm. get. You know? So I joined force, then Dato Malik Wang Marikan become my shareholders. Mm -hmm. And we now team back again, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, I used to work for him for five and a half years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so he also helped us to to build the company. Yeah. Ma so maybe we can uh, talk a little bit about about that. Uh, when Bank Nagara contacted you to to come back to start uh, uh, Fim Asset, um, uh, do you have any uh, concern about starting your own fund or your your you're quite optimistic and quite uh, positive that you can make it work. It, it's, it's a risk, la. it's a risk. But I think uh, if you ask me, <coughs> that is an entrepreneurial decision. Mm. Now, why I say that? Before I left, I was offered also to start an asset management company mm. in Singapore. I see. You know, uh, because I'm very known in building new company, you know, mm. new division, new company. Mm. But I, I, my, my supporter told me, my first two supporters told me that it will be a mistake oh, okay. to work for the giants, you know. Uh, you should strike out on your own because uh, the clients think that I can do the job. Mm, mm. So in the last minute, actually, I decided that I will pick up, take up this, this new license and go back, you know. Uh, so uh, we were lucky at the beginning. We have a very humble start, mm -hmm. but subsequently, actually, at that time, you know, I was very lucky. I bring in a lot of clients. Right. Okay. So and in fact, my first institutional clients was actually GIC. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that is quite a, and uh, we did very well for them for the uh -huh. first three years. That gave us a very good. Head start, you know. Why? Okay. And we did very well for them, mm. and uh, that also is very good for us. Mm. Three years later, <laughs> when did we get EPF, because uh -huh. the EPF requirement is that you must start your company for three years I before we, they can give us any money. Since we, our first three year record was so good, so we were lucky then to have EPF coming in on April Fool, mm -hmm. 1997. Oh. Uh, so, so at the beginning when you first started your company, uh, okay. th there was no institutional investment? Okay, uh, okay, one of the decisions to come back was that we have two very, we have two individual mm -hmm. supporters. Ah, okay. uh, one of them are Singaporean, they are family office, okay. and uh, they, they say they will give us some money. Mm -hmm. And one of them is an uh, individual entrepreneur I see. <coughs> okay. who used to own multi-purpose uh -huh. and then he sold it off later on. Yep. Uh, luckily, you know, all these people stay with us for a long, long time. I see. Yeah. Okay, okay. In fact, my first client is still with us today. Wow. That is more than 25 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My second client was with us more than, I think more than 12 years. Uh -huh. uh, that's because his family office parent pass away. Uh -huh. and, and, and so, so at the beginning, uh, how, how long did it take you to um, you know, raise the enough money that you feel that it's sustainable and, and, and it's quite uh, a good size for you? 
at the beginning, um, do you mind sharing? At the I beginning think when you are boutique in the old days, um, if you're 100 million, you can survive. Mm. But our case is quite u unique in the sense that we built in the performance bonus. Uh -huh. And our first t three years, we did very well. Mm -hmm. So we built up the reserves. I see. So that's where, you know, so every, every bull run, if you lock it in uh, mm. and you are able to catch out and you protect yourself. So every, every three, four years, uh, if you know how to protect yourself, you mm. did very well. Wow. Well, we survived for 25 years now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and interestingly, our Malaysian office, uh, touch wood, you know, we are profitable every year for 25 years. Wow. wow. That's a very good uh, record. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm. And actually, if you want to start a boutique, mm. if you yourself is a good fund manager, it will be an advantage. Eh? Just that like you open an restaurant, mm. if you are a chief cook yourself, you mm. know you, you 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 are a bit more. Mm. You you can control your cost a bit that day. But but talking about that, do, do you think that uh, it's uh, harder or easier now to start a boutique fund compared to uh, during your time? Certainly, the competition is much ha higher now. Would you say? Mm, but I think you must manage your cost now. But I think you must also have some clients to support you. Mm. You know, to have at least a, a, a some size. You mm. know, then you 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 if you control your cost and you view yourself is a good stock picker, if mm. you yourself is a good fund manager, yeah, then you can. And you do need a bit of luck mm, to have a good start. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the, the, the good start is very important. Mm. The bad start, you need more luck <laughs> to come back. You know? yeah, yeah. That's, that's, I think, I, I would rate myself very lucky. Mm. First, I have two very strong supporters. Mm -hmm. Then subsequently, I got institution. And then my investment philosophy helped. Mm. You know, we are not only good stock picker, we are also able to read the market right mm. and then to get out. Mm. And this philosophy that you never fully invest at all time really helped us a lot. I see. Yeah, talking about reading the market uh, during the Asian financial crisis, uh, how, um, can you tell us your experience over that, that time? How do you see the market? No, if you study carefully, yeah, mm. The market runs up a lot in 1997. Mm. And if your stock pick is good, you can reduce your equity exposure and still outperform. Ah, okay. And that's your biggest advantage. Once you know that you are able to outperform with a reduced equity exposure, do that. Wow. Stay low. Okay. Because just in case the guy crash, mm. you have the cash to buy. Mm. You know? Nine seven by coincidence, uh, all the crash come with the r strong rising market one mm. most of the time. <laughs> yes. So at that during that time, mm. you must be willing to underperform. Right. Get out a bit more, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and it, it's not easy. It's not easy. Then in between, you need. Let's say if you are seventy percent invested. Mm and your stock pick is good, mm. you still outperform, that's the ideal position. Uh -huh. Then when the market crash, right, you have 30%, you know. But how were you able to do that okay. with, with, with less exposure but uh, still outperform? Oh, some of your stock pick you can imagine, you know, especially when the market is at the lowest point, that mm. makes a significant difference. Mm. When they are at the lowest, you buy at the cheapest. And I give you an example. When the 97 crash, mm. to go to tax bubble of 2000, mm. that's only two years. Huh? Yeah. <coughs> you make a lot of money. Mm. During a lot that, of that, share that is a very cheap. Mm. Especially, I can remember 97 was so bad, that's Asian crisis. Mm. Many of the share dropped 90%. Wow. And you bought them, huh? they wow. can go back again, you know. That means it's. I remember the top three pick. Mm -hmm. 
we make in in 1997 mm. uh, the is seven and a half times mm -hmm. ten times and 14 or 15 times within two years you know wow that show how important it is to sell out mm. and then let the, the market go down and then buy at the lowest <laughs> again. again but you must have the cash mm -hmm. so not fully never fully invest at all time it's a very good I philosophy see. I see okay maybe bringing that that philosophy to the current time as well do you mind uh, maybe sharing some of your 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 investment right now that that uh, over the past few years has has done very well for you and how, how do you see them? The best example, more recent one was second half last year mm. towards February this year. Mm. You can see the market, US market is performing quite well, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's performing. Also, the profits are doing quite well. Uh, but they no longer like uh, rising sharply, you know. Okay. They, they steadily go up, but mm -hmm. they are economically, US are still doing quite well, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So they drive the market up to the max in February this mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now in February, there was uh, one or two weeks which the market go up quite sharply. Mm -hmm. In fact, that was the time people should also catch up. How and, do you and, spot and ETF, ETF sometimes can make it worse. Mm. When the market is good, the ETF is performing very well. Yeah. And uh, every day there's a subscription, they mm. just go and buy the big cap. Yeah. So yeah. they go up. Mm. But the minute it cracks, like now, you notice that ETF is no longer performing that well. Although mm. actually, the index stock also yeah. The, the non-index stock also don't <coughs> perform that well, right? yeah. no? so you need to you need to figure out a bit, you know. Mm. Uh, so, so sometimes value investing give you a guidance, you know. Mm. When they are too high, you you get out, mm. and then you have cash, right? Yep. When they try to keep on dropping, mm. but like coincidence, Malaysia dropped very sharply. Yeah. So you know you get a chance to buy them, you know. Mm. Yeah, talk, talking about that, uh, I think uh, some of your recent investment like uh, Inari, Amatron and also uh, Hibiscus, do you mind sharing your thesis or how, how do you see them? How, how, how were you able to spot them uh, that they are on a, on a recovery trend? Or Hibiscus trend? is very interesting because if I'm not mistaken, uh, mm. Hibiscus listed at the price of 75 cents. Mm go up all the way to two dollars and seventy plus mm -hmm. and uh, without profit yeah <laughs> but they have no gearing that's very interesting mm -hmm. without profit but they have no gearing yeah okay so they invested because they must make sure they invest enough otherwise three years later I think they they are not allowed to continue yes so they invested but the first few investment is not so good mm the shares start dropping. Mm. Towards the end of it, the share was traded. I remember when they came to see us, mm. uh, they were trying to do a placement because banks do not like to have so much exposure to, to, to oil and oh, gas. Mm -hmm. So they could potentially a victim. I see. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they may withdraw their line and all mm -hmm. that. So, the best thing for them to do is to do a right issue. Mm -hmm. So they came to see us. Mm -hmm. On the day when it was traded at 20 cents, mm -hmm. from $2.70 plus, you know, <laughs> you're talking about more than 90% disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> I look at the company, I thought the company has no gearing. Mm -hmm. And then they recently, at that time, mm -hmm. and uh, second half of 2016, Mm -hmm. Around second half two zero one six, they they have then invest in a com in an oil field right. in the North Sea, right. and that company give them some profit, uh -huh. but but they are just beginning to more profit, okay. and and the share tank. So I thought it was very cheap. Mm. So they give us they did a placement ten percent discount okay. at eighteen cent. So we took them. I see. Okay. Yesterday was ninety-three cent. 
and you're still you're still uh, invested in we that. We still have we uh, still have the strength. Yeah, yeah. That's, so that's that it. that is a uh, the beauty of a crisis, now. Mm. They they are so cheap. So what 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 is very key is that our investment philosophy or our investment criteria is that uh, the the gearing must be low mm. for us to invest, mm. and the company must be able to grow. And okay. the management have, must be good, must be strong. you know, okay. must have gone through. The CEO is a pioneer in oil and gas, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. We were lucky, you know, this is one of the killer. Right. <laughs> but we actually subsequently buy even more later on. Ah, okay. The first batch was we took at 18 cents. Right. Okay, then we okay. bought some more okay. at a higher price. But not, it's still, it's still much lower than price and price. I see, okay. <laughs> And uh, for your for your style of strategy uh, um, for looking at stocks, um, do you do you also feel that you know after the current change of government in Malaysia, uh, you see that a lot of the previous government linked companies uh, has has tanked quite a lot. Do you potentially see them as an opportunity as well, or how how do you view that? Crisis is an opportunity, mm -hmm. but. You must see that potentially the company is going to grow. Mm. You read it right, you make a lot of money. Because as you can see, quite a number of companies drop more than 50%, yeah. just within one week, you know, yeah. within a short time. But you must try to analyze to make sure that these people will come back. Mm. So then you will be taking a longer term view. Mm -hmm. Will it go down further? Mm -hmm. Before it goes up, it's very hard to read. You sell the share, it goes down. Then, then your ability to read how other people is going to behave is also very important. Mm. So investment is an art. Investment is, uh, is, an, it, it, it is in some sense very uh, yeah. need you to know a bit more about the psychology Psycho of investor. Yeah, right? to, to so predict what the market will yes, react. Because Whoever, whether they're individual or institution, if they sell the share, it goes down. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. market psychology becomes important. Mm. But it seldom the the crisis came. It goes down sharply. If the company has very low gearing, make sure that they don't hide in their associate <laughs> company. Huh? Uh. If you believe that, they will be able to survive. Mm. The management is good. Mm and they should be able to turn around. You normally can make good money. I see. Wow, that's, that's an interesting strategy right there. Uh, no guarantee, <laughs> but, but, <you laughs> of know, course. but we have course. done it a few times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, in, in 2015, uh, you, you actually published and wrote a book, uh, Rising Above Financial Storm. Uh, it's it's a, def a very, very interesting read. Uh, but I, I just want to ask you, you know, what, what motivates you to, to start writing that book? If you are in the fund management for so long, mm. you know, and uh, if you have a tr good track record, mm. and I think a good long-term track record make a very big difference because your long year of good long term, long years of uh, a good track record uh, is is a testimonial that you you have done well, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, if you're willing to share your experience with people, the people who read your book will benefit. Yeah. So, uh, okay, when I when I did very well in 1987, uh, then then I already have more than ten over years experience. Mm -hmm. I was quite keen to write, mm. but then I felt nobody will will buy my book. Because the years of experience is just too short. Mm. In another equation, 1997, that is even much yeah. later. Ten no? years later, yeah. Uh, I felt that I also did very well in 1997 and 98. Mm. At that time, we were already managing uh, uh, EPF money, wow. our firm asset management. Mm. You know. And uh, I remember 1997, we outperformed the benchmark wow. set by them mm. by more than 29%. Wow. And 1998, 
is even better. 1998, we outperformed another 36. Mm -hmm. So then also, I also felt that I, I should write a book. Mm. But I still give up. You know why? At that time, I felt that the number of years of experience from firm asset management, mm. forget about including Arab Malaysian, because yeah. those are very hard to track the mm -hmm. record, you know. Mm -hmm. Because I, I went to DG and I went to yes. John Gobert, you know. Yes. So those are very short term. Yeah. So when it comes to 9798, although I did so well, but mm. that's only first, that's only Malaysia only. Mm. Number two, it's only five years mm. from firm asset management. Mm. Although if you go back to 1987, I have longer years, but those, those are patchy, you know. Yes. So I, I felt if Peter Lynch managed Magellan Fund for 13 years, <laughs> this five years Malaysia only, who's going to read your book, you know? <laughs> so I actually did give up. But okay. you know, I have in mind. I see. Okay. It's only when, when I get to 2010, mm. I felt that that will be a better time, mm. 2010. Mm. Because 2010, uh, our ASEAN fund was ranked number one by Morningstar wow. from one year to 15 years. Mm. And that time, nobody has that record. Mm. And that's credible. Mm. That time, I really seriously say, hey, hello, I better <laughs> think about it very carefully. Uh, mm -hmm. Then 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, we mm. did very well. Mm. Uh, our ASEAN fund is ranked number one by Thomson Reuters uh, on the day of our 20th anniversary, wow. February the 8th. Mm -hmm. uh, number one for one to 20 years, mm -hmm. which also nobody will have that. Yeah, yeah. On our 20th anniversary, February the 3rd, 2015, when, when, when Thomson Reuters informed us that we were number one, one to 20 years. Mm -hmm. So wow, that few months are already <laughs> so our book ready, was yeah. out on the fourth quarter yes. of 2015. Yes, wow. So the book is really uh, uh, almost uh, 25 years in the making. Uh, since so you, since so you have it's the idea. very long years, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I, I thought people would have enjoyed uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, yes. reading our experience. Like, you know, when I first started going to India in 2001, mm -hmm. we started going to Taiwan, Korea, Hong Kong, China, we've been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, although we are particularly strong in ASEAN, you know, mm -hmm. we are also, uh, it's long enough la, for yeah. you to share your experience with people. Yeah, definitely. Uh, how we, we prove to people that, you know, this never fully invest and our investment criteria, how we pick stock. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Definitely, you give a lot of a lot of actual example in the books on how how you decide. Uh, on the but company. the book doesn't include hibiscus. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Also, <laughs> we have other killer uh, Penta Master, yeah. which we bought two years recently. Mm -hmm. Also up, you know, from the first day we bought, you know, it's up like nine hundred percent. Yeah. So, but unfortunately, it's not heavyweight enough, mm, you know. But hibiscus is heavyweight. Yeah. That's, that's, that's very, very interesting. And uh, also the other one was Inari. Mm. Inari also, we were lucky. We come in Inari at a very low price. Mm -hmm. And then also within a f two years, you know, we, or three, three years, you know, we also make more than 500%. Yeah, yeah, that, that was so, a very, so very So that was also, pick. so last few years, every year we seem to have one. <laughs> <laughs> Hibiscus in 2016. Mm -hmm. I think in Nari was 2014. Yeah. I think. And, and, uh, w when you share with uh, share with us uh, your your whole uh, wide range of experience, uh, you, you you seems to have a uh, kickstart almost the entire investment industry here in Singapore and Malaysia, uh, and also building up your your firm uh, firm asset uh, management. Uh, what what is what are you looking forward right now? You know what what is the plan for you? It seems that you have uh, achieved already so much in this industry. Um, do you, how are you pushing uh, firm asset management forward? It's, it, uh, life is changing. You know, actually, mm. very interesting. Life <laughs> is changing. When I first started, you know, you're talking about twenty five years ago. 
you you feel less confident, but you are very courageous. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, well, you know, <laughs> yeah, you, 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 nothing to nothing lose. To lose yeah. You just go in. Today, by right, we have much longer track record, much more experience, mm. much longer history, you know. So I was telling myself, it's the client that you can get to make you able to survive even better. By right, we should be much more experienced than before. Mm. Unfortunately, uh, I would say we should not take it lightly also. The mm. market is volatile, it's changing. Mm. We still need to be very careful. But we are strongly believe if your long-term surplus fund, equity is one of the best mm. for you to put in your money uh, and also property as long as you don't go and buy them at the highest point. <laughs> and in between, uh, you, you may get caught mm -hmm. every now and then, mm -hmm. but you 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 practice your philosophy, you practice your investment criteria in the long run. Mm. I think you should be able to beat the fixed deposit by a very big margin. Yeah, yeah. So that's my strong belief. I see. And the other thing, of course, although it's difficult, you know, uh, as an entrepreneur, your happiness is that you create jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, although, okay, la, we create about 20, 28 jobs, you know, uh, it's not a big number. Mm -hmm. But for people who want to learn, we are one of the very few, you know, mm. who's willing to train the young graduate. Many of the people, they are never given an opportunity. Mm. And we give them. Well, although the we didn't pay them very well, but we give them a good start. Mm. The most difficult, I tell you, thousand, hundred of thousand of people who want to be a fund manager. But when you're new, mm -hmm. you can't even get inside. Yeah. It, mm. You have definitely shown that, you know, uh, not just uh, as a fund manager, but also as a businessman that the, over the, if you're, if you're consistent and, 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 you know, stay on to, to it for a long term, you definitely can find success. Uh, in life, um, but if I ask you, you know, if you were to go back uh, 20, 30 years ago to, mm -hmm. to your younger self right mm -hmm. now, uh, what advice would you give your younger self right now if, if you're going to start all, all over again? You know, how would you do things differently? I can only share my experience, yeah, yeah. Uh, to be fair. Huh? I think do what you like is very important because that is the one that gives you a lot of stamina mm -hmm. because you like it. You, know? mm -hmm. you you, you know, you yeah. like it, so you will continue. So that is a good start. But stamina, mental strength is also very important. You need a lot of mental strength. Mm. And you also need luck. So, but if you have luck, y you can compromise the rest. You know, <laughs> if you have, if you have, uh, but hopefully you have all of them because luck doesn't come Unless you also have a capability, mm -hmm. you also have a formula, you also have a integrity, you also have a, this thing to yeah. perform. Mm -hmm. But, but I, I, I still think that people who have surplus money, long-term surplus money, going to equity is not a bad option. So. Mm. Wow. And choose a fund manager that you think you can trust. Huh? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us, Dr. Tan. Uh, once again, Dr. Tan from uh, Firm Asset Management, founder and CEO. Thank you very much, Dr. Tan. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. To get the latest notification on our upcoming podcast, do subscribe to us on our YouTube or on iTunes and wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, you can just search Value Invest Asia or the title of our podcast, The Asian Mavericks. If you like this episode, I hope you rate and review us on iTunes and uh, I'll see you guys real soon.